Today, we're diving into a critical topic that you'll definitely encounter in the emergency room. Breathlessness. Whether it's a mild case or a full-blown emergency, your approach can make a world of difference. So, let's break it down step by step. First things first, always start with the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. Make sure the patient has a clear airway. If they're struggling to breathe, this is your top priority. Check if the patient is speaking or making sounds. If they can, their airway is likely open. If not, look for obstructions and be ready to intervene. Next, get them on oxygen, whether it's a nasal cannula or a non-rebreather mask. Get that O2 flowing. Meanwhile, check vital signs like heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation. Rapidly assess these vitals because they'll guide your next steps. Now let's gather a quick but focused history. Use the OP Kirsten mnemonic that is onset, provocation, quality, radiation, severity, and time. This helps you understand the nature of their breathlessness. Ask questions like, when did it start? What makes it better or worse? How does it feel? Does the pain or discomfort radiate anywhere? How severe is it on a scale of one to 10? And how has it changed over time? Don't just listen while asking the questions. It's not a survey. We are in the middle of goddamn emergency here. Do the physical exam as well. Inspect the patient's chest. Listen to their breath sounds and palpate for any abnormalities. Pay attention to signs of distress like use of accessory muscles or cyanosis. Listen for abnormal breath sounds, wheezing, crackles, or stray door. Can give you crucial clues. Now, based on the clues, we have to reach a provisional diagnosis to take initial steps. Think about the vindicate, mnemonic, vascular, infectious, neoplastic, degenerative, iatrogenic, congenital, autoimmune, traumatic, and endocrine. Here are some key ones. First, asthma or COPD exacerbation. Look for a history of respiratory diseases. Patients will often have wheezing and difficulty exhaling. Here, we administer bronchodilators like albuterols, systemic corticosteroids, and anticholinergics such as ipratropium. Oxygen therapy and continuous monitoring are crucial too. Next, pulmonary embolism. If the patient has risk factors like recent surgery or immobility, consider this. Symptoms include sudden onset dyspnea, chest pain, and hypoxia. Start anticoagulation with heparin, ensure the patient is stable, and prepare for advanced imaging like a CT pulmonary angiogram. For pneumonia, check for fever, cough, and crackles on auscultation. Broad-spectrum antibiotics are the go-to after obtaining blood cultures. Provide oxygen and supportive care and monitor for sepsis or respiratory failure. Pneumothorax presents with absent breath sounds on one side and sudden sharp chest pain. For a small pneumothorax, observation and supplemental oxygen might be sufficient. For a large pneumothorax, perform needle decompression and insert a chest tube. Lastly, heart failure. Look for signs like peripheral edema and jugular venous distension. Administer diuretics like furosemide to reduce fluid overload, provide oxygen, and consider vasodilators or inotropes for cardiogenic shock. Continuous monitoring is key here. To recap, always prioritize the ABCs, that is airway, breathing, and circulation. Gather and assess history and physical exam findings quickly. Think of common causes using the Vindicate approach and provide prompt and appropriate management. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more medical tips and insights. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow med students.